Hello, Conscious Co-Creators, and welcome to your Daily Double Readings for the week ahead. These are the decks that we'll be using this week to get you two card combos to choose from for your guidance and messages for the next five days. So if you've watched the first 100 Daily Double Readings and you've been choosing your card combos, we are doing this a bit differently from here on out. The entirety of the five Daily Doubles for the week will be featured in one video. You'll find the timestamps for each Daily Double Reading Monday through Friday in the description below for you. So this way you can choose to watch them day by day if you'd like, or you can choose for the entirety of the week for yourself. So as always, I hope that this serves you and I will see you in your daily double reading. Welcome to your daily double reading. Today we will be using the Daily Rituals Oracle along with the Kawaii Tarot to get you two card combos to choose from for your message. So you can tap into your intuition and ask which of these two card combos that we're about to lay out is going to give you the direction that you need for the day. These definitely come with an affirmation along with them. So that's a nice added bonus. Woo. And I've got card one there flipped over a bit. But they said we're gonna keep it, so we're keeping it. Had a little peek there and card number two. Let's add tarot to each of these to make them doubles comboed up. They want both of these. This one goes here and this one goes here. All right, let me set those for you. All right, card combo number one or card combo number two. Once you have made the most intuitive selection for you, you can head down to the description and click on the timestamp that coordinates with your combo that you've chosen and I will see you in your reading. Hello group one and welcome to your daily double reading today. If you're listening to this, you have chosen the first card combo here. And I did get a peek at this card as it flipped over, so let me show it to you. It is the number seven card, cleansing. I cleanse myself of the things that no longer serve me. Uh, so this may be an ongoing message they're saying for some of you. You may be working on some sort of cleansing or have been making sure that you're doing cleansing rituals perhaps to make sure that your energy is clear and vibrant and glowing and ready and open to receive. Um, this card is really asking you today to implement some sort of a clearing practice where you intentionally cleanse your energy or you intentionally clear your energy. And I have to to say because of the depiction of the card in particular you can see that she's using water to do that so it may be helpful for you if you can't fit something extra into your schedule to make sure that you are taking a cleansing clearing or intentional shower or bath something that can be added to your regular you know daily schedule and the things that you do um, on a regular also they're showing me somebody washing their hands um, so maybe as you're washing your hands, you're being very intentional about it. I mean, our hands have chakras in the palms that lead right to our heart center. So that may be something that's helpful for you today. But the idea of this is to make sure that you're conscious and aware of the things that are not working for you and that you're not keeping them in your energy over the course of the day, that you're being very aware that this doesn't need to be here anymore or I can let this go or this isn't working for me or this isn't serving me or this is cluttering me up or it's making me feel kind of uh, murky, foggy, dense, heavy. If that's the case, then have a clearing practice ready to go. You can use, you know, clear quartz, clearing stones, grounding stones are often helpful when you're trying to cleanse your energy. Again, water, 
Salt is a great way to clear your energy as well. Also, any kind of smudging tool. If you have a smudging tool around you, you're gonna wanna make sure that that is up and ready to go uh, to use throughout the day, no matter what it is you're doing, when you notice or are aware of that kind of energy cluttering up your vibe or your head's feeling really overwhelmed or you know you feel heavy, that's when you wanna take that clearing tool out and intentionally release. Let's see what is connected to this for you. Ooh, a page of swords, okay. So this is a new chapter energy, a page energy. We're getting the page of swords connected to this. The page of swords is definitely a card that asks you to be open to new insights, new points of learning, uh, new understandings, clarity that comes from maybe an unexpected place, cleansing and clarity with a page of swords, a new way to receive. It could also be a new way to cleanse your system or to cleanse your mind or to clear yourself. For some of you that just may be consciousness around a particular thought that isn't serving you and having the... Um, new affirmation or the new statement ready to go. You may have to do a bit of research because you have a page of swords here. So like if you're not uh, aware of cleansing tools, clearing tools that work for you, you may want to actually tap into some research. And this energy together uh, really makes me feel like this may be a new practice that you can implement far beyond just today. So if that feels aligned for you, then lean into that energy because uh, again, a page is a, a new chapter, a new beginning. It's the beginning of the court card. So you always want to uh, be very open and curious when you get a page energy because something is meant to be given to you. And in this case, with swords energy and the element of air, it will be communicated to you. It will come through and feel like, you know, it sits in your truth or your intuition is right on point with it. It feels very clear. A new practice, a new way of doing things, a new understanding around how it is you can keep your energy nice, free, and clear. So I hope that this serves you for the day. And if you enjoyed this reading and you don't want to miss any of my future readings, you know what to do, and I will see you in the next Daily Double. Hello, Group 2, and welcome to your Daily Double reading today. If you're listening to this, you've chosen the second card combo here. So let's take a look at your Daily Rituals card first. 21 and Luna. This is the moon energy. Okay. This is another, they're saying it's another arrow to the lunar cycles or the cycles that are going on. I don't know what that means by they're adding that word, another. So maybe you've been getting messages already to pay attention to the cycles that are happening in your life or to observe and pay attention to the moon cycles. Maybe you've been really aware of doing rituals or practices or setting intentions around the moon. If that's the case, this is in complete alignment for you. It says, I honor the sacred flow and rhythms of the feminine, which of course, the lunar energy is connected, the moon energy is connected to the feminine energy as the opposite, which is the sun, is connected to the masculine energy. So lunar energy or feminine energy asks us to be open to receiving. And in this case, this card is directly uh, pointing you in the direction of flow and the rhythms or the cycles that are happening. So I would say for you, group number two, you really want to be aware of what is happening around the moon cycles or what kind of cyclical patterns you are currently in and asking yourself whether or not they work for you. Are they in flow? Are they in alignment? Does something need to shift? Is there more insight that I need? Do I need to be open to uh, an understanding or to dig into something in the darkness especially? Um, I also feel like this may be a call to, you, to your intuition. So spirit saying to you, I really need you to be more connected. I really need you to uh, start trusting and believing in your own intuitive nudges and those uh, messages and signs that are coming through or those connections that are happening that are pointing you in the direction of belief and alignment around your intuition because that will put you right into a sacred flow when you're trusting your intuition and you're trusting that feminine energy and you're trusting that you're receiving exactly what it is that you're meant to receive. Let's see what is connected. A knight of swords. Wow, okay. We're getting the swords court cards here today. 
A Knight of Swords is a wonderful energy of forward movement pretty quickly. So this is the second fastest moving knight. Knights are always going to move you forward. They have a mission. They're on a mission. They're on their, you know, horseback and they're ready to go. A Knight of Swords moves forward in particular with a plan or a strategy or an insight and clarity. So this is waiting for the clarity, waiting for the insight, understanding that maybe something is off with certain cycles or there is a rhythm that's going on that maybe doesn't suit or maybe it does suit. If it does suit, if the cycle that you're in feels really good, the Knight of Swords will compel you to move that forward and to stay in that flow or to stay in that rhythm. But if there is something that's presenting that doesn't feel like it's in the sacred flow, that it's not in the right rhythm, that something's off and it's throwing you out of whack or it's you know, confusing you, or it feels still like it's in the darkness, to get a Knight of Swords, what Spirit is kind of telling you here is, particularly around the moon, if that's resonating with you, or if you've been already getting that kind of a message for yourself, like I need to pay more attention to the moon cycles, I need to be in connection with the lunar energy, I need to make sure that I'm open to receiving during those times, or that I, again, do rituals or practices around that to open up my channel, that's definitely in alignment because it's gonna help to move you forward. If it's not around the moon, then they're just telling you whatever the cycle or flow is that's happening in your life, if it's not suiting, then you have all of the ability to tune in and tap in and ask for the next steps forward or for a new plan or a new strategy. And once you get that clarity and that truth sits within you, they want you to move on it. It's like, go ahead and take that action. Go ahead and execute that plan. It is an alignment flow. So this group needs to be very, very open today and, and trusting and and tuned into what your intuitive nudges are telling you. Sometimes when this kind of uh, coupling happens, your plans will be rearranged or you'll feel like, oh my God, I just had this idea and I don't know if I should follow it. Tune, keep tuning in, <laughs> you know, watch for those arrows. Or if you go to do something that you had planned and it just doesn't feel right anymore, it just feels a little off center, if it feels out of alignment, pay attention to that and ask for the insight or the clarity that you need to move it forward so that you can make sure that you're moving in the right direction, trusting your intuition and the insights and the understandings each step of the way. So I hope that this serves you for the day. And if you enjoyed this reading and you don't want to miss any of my future readings, you know what to do. And I'll see you in the next Daily Double. Welcome to your Daily Double reading. Today we are going to be using the Magic of Unicorns Oracle cards along with the Prosperity Elephant playing cards to get two card combos for you to choose from for your message. So we're working with, you know, uh, unicorns and elephants, a very prosperous and unique magical kind of combination today. So you can start tuning in to your intuition, maybe take a few deep breaths, center your energy to ask which of these two card combos are going to direct you in a way that really serves you for the day. Woo. There's one. Cards are kind of malleable or like flexible feeling. Yeah, I see it. Uh, so I wonder if that is a little bit of an insight for us before we even tune in to the readings. Okay, we are using the playing cards in place of the tarot here today. So we don't have any major arcana cards that we're going to be working with. And for each suit, we are missing one in the court card energy, of course. Okay, and thank you. All right, let me set those for you. All right, card combo number one or card combo number two, whichever one is resonating with you the most for the day, you can head down to the description and click on the timestamp next to the card combo that you've chosen, and I will see you in your daily double reading.
Hello, Group One, and welcome to your reading today. If you're listening to this, then you have chosen the first card combination uh, for your message. So we'll take a look at what the unicorns have to tell you first here. 41, the law of grace. Oh, I love this card. Whenever it pops up, it feels so good, so loving. It says, be your own. Be your divine essence, dissolve all in grace. This card is about shifting your vibration to a space of, the word they're using is eternal, eternal love. And especially in your heart connections or your relationships today, those special people that mean something to you, to first of all, give yourself grace, I will say, because we're working with the law of grace, um, but also to give them grace. It's this feeling of spreading love from a really unconditional space and place. So if you're met with some sort of challenge or disagreement today, or if you're feeling like the energy is a bit volatile, let's say, or confusing or overwhelming, or um, you know, you have some back and forth things going on. I mean, we'll get more information with this, but if you're not understanding someone, if communication's a bit weird, um, if someone's taking an action or making a decision or if something goes on today, uh, it, could, it doesn't even have to be somebody you know. Like if you meet someone who's just an acquaintance or is out there in the world and, you know, something happens that's not so pleasant, what they're saying is give people grace. <laughs> give yourself grace in that situation as well. Um, this is, like I said, it's a feeling of unconditional love. And here, it just makes me feel like the magic is available when you tap in and tune into your heart center and you open that up. So this is forgiveness, you know, forgiving yourself. It's also a 41.5, which makes me feel like we're shifting to this energy today. They're giving you this reminder to tap into your divine essence and allow anything that's been bothering you or anything that's been harsh or unkind to kind of dissolve in grace. It's the feeling of release or letting it go, but it's not just we're letting it go and throwing it out there. It's the feeling of, uh, you know, letting it go and dissolve into love. So you're tuning back into a heart-centered, unconditional, loving energy and relieving yourself. It's like releasing. Let's see what we have connected to this. Mm, lovely. A six of wands. It's a six of wands, a six of clubs. A six of wands is a card that is very balancing, beautiful energy. I mean, the five to the six tells us, you know, we're looking for balance here. And a six of wands in particular is a card of recognition. So you may want to like give somebody a compliment today. You know, if, if you see someone is struggling, you want to say, hey, it's all right. It's okay. We all make mistakes sometimes, right? Like we all have those days. Are you having that bad day? You might, you know, they're showing me somebody, you know, um, uh, paying for someone in a drive through you know, giving, it's a, that's a lot, giving, but this, this energy says you're on top of your game or people are noticing or recognizing you. So someone may like pay for you or you may pay for someone. And the idea is just to receive that energy and then cycle it back out if that's what's happening. This tells me, this is a victory card. So it tells me that you will be victorious and shifting to this kind of energy and reclaiming or recentering in your divine essence that you can work from a very high and elevated place today of love, uh, grace, of course, and acknowledgement. So you may be acknowledging yourself and giving yourself grace and understanding like I am doing great or even though I've had some setbacks or even though it's been a difficult uh, experience here or that happened, I'm going to give myself grace in this moment and I'm not going to like belittle myself or tear myself down for this. Um, it also may be that other people are recognizing you and you're meant to accept and receive that recognition. And again, as I said, this can span out to people in your life, um, no matter who it may be, where you are giving them grace and you're offering that up and you're acknowledging them. So this is a beautiful energy for you today, group number one, and I really hope that it serves you. If you enjoyed this reading and you don't want to miss any of my future readings, hit that like button for me. Make sure that you are subscribed, share this video or or any of the other videos uh, with other people who you think may find um, this insight helpful or may want to pick their own messages and cards. And please leave me a comment down below. I'd love to see a rose to know that this is the pile that you chose today. I will see you in your next Daily Double.
Hello, group two, and welcome to your reading today. If you're listening to this, you've chosen the second card combo here for your message. Let's take a look at the unicorn card first to see what the unicorns have to offer you. Number two, wow, look at this. This is a these cards are wonderful. Pure intention. Find clarity and surrender your ego. So obviously, this card is asking you to move forward with the power of intention. This is a, a card that will stop you in your tracks today and ask you to realign and to get clear on what it is that you are intending. So this could be, uh, you know, small things throughout the day. What are you intending for your day today in like the bigger picture? I'm intending to have a joyful day. I'm intending to have a grateful day. I'm intending to have a good day. It could also be something that's very specific. Maybe you have a certain encounter or communication like a meeting or a conversation that you're going to have today or you're submitting something is what they're saying. Maybe you're submitting something and you want to make sure that you have a very clear intention around the outcome of that submit submission or the energy attached to it. It could also mean that you're setting bigger intentions for longer term goals. Wherever it is that this is coming up for you, so like um, it will feel like a bit of an empty space or it will feel unclear, that's what they're talking about. So if you, you know, you say you have this big dream, but you haven't set very clear intention around it, they're asking for you today to actually look at that, to take some time to ask yourself, what is my intentional energy that gets me to this big dream or that I'm going to be taking action from as it concerns or leads me to this big dream? Um, you can see it says find clarity. So it's a stop energy where you ask yourself, what is my intention here? Uh, and then you make sure that you get clarity on it, not from your mind or an egoic perspective, but from your divinity, which is always going to be setting great intentions for you. You know, your divine self, your true self, your heart center is always going to find the best and highest intention to act from. The other piece of this that I'm going to say before we flip this over is... Acting with intention is a consciousness practice, especially if you're just doing that for, you know, the course of the day. So you're acting with intention, even with the smallest little actions that you're taking. Why are you wearing the thing that you're wearing? Why are you choosing those socks? Why are you packing that thing? Why are you using that word even? If that's you, I love that energy and it feels really good to do that because you become so, so conscious and then your spirit team, when you're working with intention of any sort, also gets to be on the same page as you. Everybody gets to co-create together when you set clear intentions because you're sending that line out to your team to say, this is the kind of energy I want to be in or this is the kind of energy that is attached to this for me. So everybody co-creating together, even for the smallest of things, if that is, you know, what's coming up for you today. All right, let's see what's connected now. Mm, four of cups. I love this. Okay. Four of hearts here. A Four of Cups energy is about maybe feeling a little bit bored, you know, uh, or um, apathy comes with this card. It's a lovely card because when you get a Four of Cups, you may be like, well, is this all there is? That's what they were talking about. When you're unclear, if it's like, hmm, huh, I don't know about this, or I don't know how I'm going to get there, or I'm not sure what to wear, right? Wherever it is that you have that questioning energy or that where things are unclear, it's a little muddled perhaps, that this Four of Cups is telling you that if you set the intention, then the gift's going to come. It's going to be delivered for you. Your perspective is going to start to open because now you have clarity around the energy. Why am I? Why do I want to have intention around my outfit? What is the intention I want to um, put out there? Wearing whatever I'm wearing today, right? This is just an easy example. What kind of energy do I want to put out into the world? And then placing that intention directly on choosing the clothing that will put that out there. Once you feel that, you're going to notice something, right? This card says a gift is coming in your periphery. So when you set the intention, it's going to open up your perspective to be able to see that gift that's coming in from, uh, you know, the sidelines or just out of your normal range of sight. So you're looking through your closet and you notice something that you totally forgot that you had. It was maybe in the back and it was shoved somewhere or you forgot that you even owned that or you thought you tossed it out and it comes into your consciousness. You see it and you're like, this is the perfect thing to wear for this intention. That's the kind of energy that's connected to the Four of Cups. So it is definitely in your highest good, group number two, to make sure that you're looking at where there may be gaps 
gaps in your intention setting and clarity around that and to stop and do that today to get everybody on the same page co-creating and to open up your perspective to receive a gift that you may not be expecting from spirit. So I hope that this serves you for the day. And if you enjoyed this reading and you don't want to miss any of my future readings, then please like this video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you have friends that you haven't shared these with, make sure you're sharing with them so that they can choose and uh, receive messages for themselves. And please leave me a comment down below. Uh, You can leave me twos if you'd like to let me know that you chose group two here. And I will see you in your next Daily Double reading. Welcome to your Daily Double Reading. Today we will be using the Sacred Self-Care Oracle along with the Crystal Unicorn Tarot. If you listened yesterday, then unicorns two days in a row. We're going to get two card combos for you to choose from for your message. So this is definitely going to be about self-care and in particular a practice that may aid you in making sure that you are at the top of your priority list, making sure that you are caring for yourself today. So tune on into that intuition of yours and ask which of these card combos is going to give me the message that I need or the self-care practice that's really going to serve me right now. Okay, we'll add some tarot cards to these. Okay, let me set those for you. Okay, card combo one or card combo two, which one is your intuition guiding you to today? Once you have made your selection, head to the timestamps down below in the description and click on the timestamp next to the card combo of your choosing, and I'll see you in your reading. Hello group one and welcome to your daily double reading today. If you are listening to this, then you have chosen the first card combo for your messages. Let's first take a look at the self-care message that's coming in for you. Read, ooh, I love this energy. So this is, Yeah, a call for you to explore is what they're saying. So I'm wondering what kind of book they're asking you to read or what feels connected for you right now. If you're in the middle of some research or you've been saying to yourself like, oh my God, I really want to make more time to read or there's a specific book or something that you, or a magazine they're saying or something that you've been wanting to make the time uh, for to kind of peruse or to get some information from, then in this case, case, this is telling you to go ahead and do that, to make time for that today. It also may be a bit of a replacement energy um, is what they're saying. So maybe you're replacing reading in, in place of something else that you were doing. That could be, you know, before bed or maybe you're taking breaks and they want you to read something instead of like watching TV or scrolling social media or, you know, et cetera, et cetera, what, what have you. Um, hmm. The 42, the six, it makes me feel like you're going to kind of gain knowledge that's going to help you feel more harmonious because that's what sixes are about. But let's get some more information. Curious. Ooh, the death energy. The death card connected to this. Mm-hmm. Let me just look at this card. It just, we can see the sun in the background and it just feels like we're moving to enlightenment or to joy or to happiness or to to a new day. 
they're saying. So the death card is not a bad card. It's a card that says you, you need to transition something or you're in the middle of a metamorphosis. So this reading could be a, about what's transitioning in your life or what's transforming in your life. It could be you leaving some sort of old... Uh, habits behind and replacing them with reading. So this is going to be as it resonates with you. Wherever it is that you feel, group number one, that you are needing a change or you felt like something's not working for you and you want to leave it behind and allow something new to kind of come into your consciousness, come into your existence is what they're saying. That's what this is talking about. You may want to do research around that. If there is some sort of uh, cycle that you're in that you know isn't serving you, so like the information that you're taking in and the way that you're taking it in isn't providing you with relaxation or it's making you feel bad about yourself or it's just making you have low energy, then I would say use the tool of reading to replace that um, exercise or that practice with, like whatever it is that habit with that you're doing. Replace it with something that you can read. It doesn't need to be informative necessarily. It can be something that just brings you joy or is just entertaining for you. And it will help to get you through this transition and into this new energy, this new day energy, this rebirth energy that often comes with the death card. So it's all about picking up a book, picking up a magazine, allowing yourself time and space to do that or replacing something that's not working so well for you or that's dragging you down or that isn't good for you with the information that comes from the reading energy for you. So I hope that this serves you for the day. Very interesting message for you, group number one. And if you enjoyed this reading and you don't want to miss any of my future readings, you know what to do. And I'll see you in the next Daily Double. Hello, group two, and welcome to your reading today. If you're listening to this, you've chosen the second card combo here. So let's take a look at your self-care message or practice. Ooh, number 12, connect with fire. Okay. This feels like a resetting, a reclamation of your fire within, and perhaps some sort of release. Oftentimes, fires are definitely used for allowing yourself to um, release, let go of, or surrender something, right? We do fire ritual. We burn pieces of paper that have something on it or to set new intentions or to ignite our inspiration or our passion or our fire. We write things down and we burn them in the fire. So this is a connection to your spirit. Fire energy, wands energy, it's about your um, divine spirit and lighting that up. They're essentially saying connect with your spirit here. Let's see what's connected with the tarot. Ooh, the King of Cups, high level emotional energy coming in with this fire. So fire and water is, you know, the first thing we want to recognize, right? Cups are connected to the suit of water or excuse me, the element of water. Um, and a King of Cups in particular is the master of that suit. So a King of Cups is going to be very compassionate, very understanding, and very emotionally stable, uh, making decisions that feel really good for all involved is what they just said, for all involved. I suspect that this reconnection to yourself is going to provide you with the kind of emotional balance that feels good for the soul is what they just said, good for the soul. So maybe you've been ignoring your spark group number two, maybe you've been ignoring the things that you're inspired to do or you haven't been making time to be creative or you haven't set your intentions perhaps or maybe you're carrying around something that you just need to release. If you're looking for a more of a stable energy, especially emotionally, and you want to have some compassion for your experience or understand um, yourself a bit better, they want you to reconnect with your soul light, perhaps do ritual around it and, and notice and acknowledge what is lighting you up. Because as you do that, some of the emotions that are connected to denying that um, for yourself are going to be cleared away for you to feel more grounded in your emotions, to feel better. And the King of Cups, especially if you've been trying to make a decision, group number two, on something that you're passionate about or that you're inspired to do, the King of Cups will feel, but if he's in an extreme energy, he's not going to make decisions from that space. So acknowledging what it is you're inspired to do or perhaps allowing yourself to release fear around maybe not taking action on it, leaving that space open, it's going to balance your emotions so that you can make a beautifully balanced decision for yourself. So you can feel like you can choose from a state of harmony 
which is nice. So I hope that this serves you for the day. If you enjoyed this reading and you don't want to miss any of my future readings, you know what to do, and I'll see you in the next Daily Double. Welcome to your Daily Double reading. Today we have the Whispers of Aloha deck along with the Vagabond Wild Tarot that we're going to get two card combos for you to choose from for your message. So we will start with the Whispers of Aloha. Absolutely love this deck. You can take a couple deep breaths, tune in, center into your intuition and ask which of these two combos is going to serve me best today. All right. And the tarot. They want this. They want this one. I thought it was the one in my hand, but no, okay. Yes, I see it, thank you. All right, let me set these for you. Card combo number one or card combo number two, whichever one is calling to you for your message today. Once you have decided intuitively, you can move down into the description and click on the timestamp next to the card combo that you have chosen and I'll see you in your reading. Hello group one and welcome to your reading today. If you're listening to this, you have chosen the first card combo. So let's first take a look at your Whispers of Aloha deck. Ooh, consider others 22. See from your kind heart. This is so nice. Ah, oh, I love this. Very masculine energy obviously attached to this card. I feel like Okay, <laughs> they showed me this card like days ago. Um, for some, I can't remember how they showed it to me, especially not this deck because I definitely use like multiple decks all the time. And I can't even remember the last time I used this deck, but I remember them showing it to me and they definitely are bringing that up now. So I'm feeling like this may have been going on for a bit, maybe a few days. Maybe there's someone in your life that you need to consider or that you have been considering, especially because this is a 22. Uh, this is gonna be about your couplings and your relationships and the choices that you're making in your relationships. See from your kind heart, this is asking for you to practice kindness and love when you are thinking of others or communicating with others. Um, and in particular, because it's two male energies, I would just say this may have for some of you to do with a male in your life, whether they are are crossed or not, you know, that doesn't matter. It could be someone who's crossed over. Um, considering, you know, sharing love with them, uh, being kind to them, maybe providing a listening ear. If you're having to make decisions and they are included or it is going to affect them, that's definitely something that you want to be conscious of and pay attention to. Maybe you're asking for their opinion on something or what they might think about it. Or, you know, you're just including them in your decision-making process if it does affect them. So that's very important there, especially if you are making a decision. Let's see what's connected. Ooh, the Fool card. Mm. 
So this is the first card of the Major Arcana, of course. It definitely tells me that you may be embarking upon a brand new path. Maybe you're choosing or trying to make a decision for you that is going to affect someone else. Maybe you've been wondering if you should take a risk or dive into something new. If that is the case, don't be afraid to ask for someone else's thoughts or opinions. It doesn't mean that you have to take them as your own or do what somebody else says or what they would do. It just means that there's some consideration that is needed here as you think about or you begin or to plan plan even, embarking upon a new path, starting something new. Um, this card is often a card of risk. It's like it's time for you to take a leap, to leave something behind and walk into the future, anticipating some things but not really knowing what the path may hold for you. So this is definitely an interesting energy for this group today. Group number one, I would say look around your life, Notice what it is that you're choosing. Ask yourself if you've considered the people that your choices are affecting. And if there is a fresh new start that needs to be made, maybe you notice that you're not considering someone, then this full card is indicating that you can start something new and kind of try it out, dive into it. You don't need to know the whole path forward or how you're going to figure everything out. You can just start considering and being kind in a different way. Uh, someone else or asking you know, them for their opinion, etc. Maybe you're including somebody um, a little bit more. Also, if this is something that you're trying to decide on that is a bit of a risk, maybe you've been thinking about it, you've been trying to plan for it, and it does involve someone else or you're working with someone else, make sure you're considering their perspective and you're getting their opinions on it and you're asking them about it. And, you know, you're allowing that to, they're saying, allowing that to sink in. Uh, so, you know, this is not putting on blinders my way or the highway, but opening up. I do think it's going to help you moving forward because there is something that is very clearly just beginning or it's in the, you know, the beginning stages and it's gonna serve you very well to include or consider others here, group number one. So make sure that you're doing that and you have some consciousness around that today. I hope that this serves you. And if you enjoyed this reading and you don't wanna miss any of my future readings, uh, please hit the like button for me. Make sure you like this video and make sure that you are subscribed to the channel so that you get notified when I post another uh, pick a card reading or a daily double. Share this with someone who also could choose their own card and get their own message for themselves and see what kind of insight resonates with them. And don't uh, be afraid to leave me a comment. You can leave me twos, leave me a zero. I love this energy so, so much. And I will see you in the next Daily Double. Hello, group two, and welcome to your reading today. If you're listening to this, you've chosen the second card combo here. We're going to look at your Whispers of Aloha card first. Wow, you know, I, I that this this deck has several cards in it, of course. I'm not exactly sure. Let me look if I can see. It doesn't say here. Um, lots of cards in a deck, right? And this particular card just always loves to come up when we're using this deck. So a change of course. If you've gotten this card before, perhaps in another reading, this is about like stirring things up. Direct your progress and realize your dreams. This is about, you know, being the champion of your own dreams, they're saying. Being the one who is invoking the change. It is a six, so it is a balanced energy. They're wanting you to stir things up, uh, for instance, or to make a change that's going to... Um, bring you closer or see you being closer to your dreams or your insights or your goals that you have for yourself that, yeah, that, that are held within your heart is how they're saying it. So we want to stir things up for this group for sure. Let's see what's connected to this energy. Ah, the seven of pentacles. Okay. So that's nice because it gives us a bit of information about how this change of course is going to be taken. It's not a swift energy. It's not a fast energy. They're just saying to you, make small changes that can direct your progress. So if you're feeling like things are maybe not progressing as fast as you want them to, this could be coming up here because this is a patience card. A seven of pentacles is a waiting energy and a diligence energy where you're showing up to water the pentacles, water the plants to do what you need to do day in and day out. And you're having patience as things grow slowly and abundantly is what they just said. Something may need to shift in the way that you are doing your regular schedule 
or in the type of force you have behind something is what they're saying, like how forceful you are, like, oh, hurry up and get this done. Like, it's like a hustle energy that you might be in and they want you to pull it back and understand that it's important to ground yourself and to remember, you have all the experience that you need to be able to show up on a regular basis and grow something beautiful over time. A change, of course, is needed in how it is you're probably doing that. So again, it could be your schedule, it could be the order in which you do something, and if you shift this, it's going to help you be on a smoother path to creating that abundance or that blossoming and blooming because you're putting in the daily work and you're using your wisdom to move that forward. So tap into your wisdom, tap into your divinity, tap into your spirit team and say, what is it that I need to change that's going to help direct my progress in a more abundant way, in a way that's going to serve me, in a way that's going to help this blossom in the quickest time available. And then allow yourself to listen to what it is you might need to shift. Could be a big change that you need to make. Maybe you're spending all of your time focused on this when you need to sprinkle your focus around or shift your focus altogether. Also could be a very small change that you're making. Get up at a half an hour earlier in order to do this. It's a very small change, an extra half an hour. It's not that much time, but it can make a big difference in the day-to-day -day experience. So tap into your spirit team and ask, what change is going to direct me in the most abundant way? What do I need to shift in order to allow myself the opportunity to move this forward in the best direction in the smoothest way possible. And I would also say, tell them that you are a willing participant in doing this, right? And then you show up every day, you make the changes, you notice your progress, you pat yourself on the back, and you give yourself grace and have a patience with yourself as this blossoming and blooming continues to make your way toward your dream, right? Continues to get come to fruition. Wow, what a nice energy uh, for you, group number two, today. A change, of course, is needed, but is so connected to what it is you've already built and what you're working on. And I feel like it's going to lead you to even more abundance. So I hope that this serves you for the day. If you enjoyed this reading and you don't want to miss any of my future readings, please hit that like button. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Share this with someone who you think might find it interesting or exciting to choose their own cards and receive their own messages. And leave me a, an emoji in the comments, maybe a spoon or the fork and spoon emoji to let me know this is the card combo that you chose for the day. And I'll see you in the next Daily Double. Welcome to your Daily Double reading. Today we will be using the Elemental Empath Oracle along with the Tarot of the Mystical Moments Mini to get you two card combos to choose from for your message. So this is a very connected spiritual type of deck, which I love. So tap on into your connection. Start asking your heart, your intuition, and channel on in the card combo that's going to give you the guidance that you need for the day. Do I see it? This one up here they want. Interesting. Okay. And let's add the tarot. Okay, let me set these for you. All right, is it card combo number one or card combo number two for you today? Once you have made your choice, intuitively, hopefully, you can head down to the description and click on the timestamp next to the card combo that feels most resonating with you, and I will see you in your reading.
Hello, Group 1, and welcome to your daily double reading today. If you're listening to this, then you have chosen the first card combo here. So let's see what kind of element you'll be working with today first. Ooh, the element of water, as you can see there. It says, it's card number eight, surrender and flow. Ride the waves, tap into the flow state, and let go. This is giving me Eight of Cups vibes big time, big time. Uh, the Eight of, just like a very positive energy, it feels like. Uh, the Eight of Cups is a card in the tarot that tells you that you've got to walk away from or surrender anything that's not working for you, especially emotionally. And as you do that, you start to walk right into a flow that allows you to have your wish fulfilled or granted. So this energy for you today is about, of course, surrender and flow, but it's about release. It's about looking around your life and giving yourself permission to not feel bad about something anymore. If something is dragging you down and you feel like you're, um, like they're showing somebody who's like in a maze where they're like jutting back and forth and it doesn't feel like a smooth flow, look at what's causing that emotional distress for yourself and release it, hand it over, allow yourself to surrender. How they're really saying it is give yourself permission um, to do that. There is this like tail and I feel like it's a mermaid energy, right? She kind of looks like a mermaid, but this tail is way back here. So I don't know, mermaids, if you like mermaids or if they're an indicator for you, you may see mermaids telling you, hey, release this, sh shift this over, surrender this over. What is the flow state that you're meant to be in right now? So you're going to be looking for the best feeling actions throughout the course of the day. What makes me feel good? What makes me feel like I'm in the flow? It says like ride the waves. This is about divine flow, right? Where is spirit leading me? Um, the feeling will feel like joy a bit. It might feel like excitement. You might feel a bit of happiness. You might feel relaxation or some sort of relief. Um, whenever I'm fighting against a flow, which I do, <laughs> you know, I'm definitely human, and I then tap in to ask, I'll feel a relief or I'll feel this feeling of peace come over me when I hit the point of flow or when I understand it. So they're like, no, you're not meant to be focusing on that. Instead, do this. It'll feel like all of a sudden you're tapped into a different kind of energy. That's what you're looking for here. You want to surrender and flow, and I would say surrender to the flow. Let's see what's connected here. The three of pentacles. Interesting. Okay, couple of messages. You can feel which one is resonating with you or maybe both of them are. <laughs> First and foremost, the Three of Pentacles is going to uh, let us know that there's a creative way to use the resources that you have. And if you're, you know, getting really frustrated with what you're working with or how you're working with this, and this could be anywhere. It doesn't have to just be in like your career. It could be the tools that you're working with to clean your home or to uh, create something or, you know, they're showing me somebody painting. So if you're painting, but whatever it is that you're physically using, there's probably a, a way to use it better, especially if you're feeling frustrated. So take a beat and release. Go allow yourself to kind of have some space and ask spirit, am I using these tools in the best way possible? Is there another way that I could um, use the resources that I have? Am I missing something that would make this easier? easier for me? Um, is there a better time frame to do this in? You know, that kind of energy. You're looking for that flow. You're looking for the feeling of flow as it concerns the physical tools that you have at your disposal, the physical resources that you've got. And if you're not using them to the best of your ability, it will feel like a bit heavy, like I said, or frustrated, that kind of energy. It won't feel like in the flow. Like, Sometimes excitement will come when you hit the flow energy because you're like, oh my God, this feels like exactly in the pocket. That's what you're looking for. So anywhere you feel frustration, it could be like the way that you're organizing something. It could be something very simple, but it'll definitely have to do with the physical resources that you are using, the tools that you are using. 
and they want you to just be in a better flow using them. So they're highlighting that for you today, group number one. The other message that's coming through here is this card can definitely be about people working together or a community energy in order to create or bring something to fruition in the future. And it just could be that you're meant to flow more with the community. So listen to how other people are seeing it or their perspective. Or you may just, they're saying, they're showing me somebody kind of like placing themselves in the background. So if you always feel like you have to lead or you have to give your opinion or you have to be the one who's saying something, you've got to um, give to the group. You know what I mean? Like you have to share your energy. You want to contribute, blah, blah, blah. If that's you where you're always like, oh my God, what they're telling me is like, just lean back a bit. <laughs> don't, don't, it's like that forceful energy. You can move into the background a bit and just observe for a bit, listen, and then you'll feel that you're meant to uh, contribute something in a natural flow if you're being called to. But don't feel forced to like show up and be and like, Force yourself into this position or this role in this community. If you're working with some sort of community, whether it's a small one in your little core family home, you and somebody else or like a family energy, or it's at work or it's online, whatever it is, just allow yourself to be an observer for a moment so that you can surrender over to some sort of a flow because I feel like they want you to take something in so that you can flow into the energy of your contribution when it's the right divine time for it. So it's about letting go of the, the need to feel like you're not worthy or that if you're in this group that you're not going to, you're going to be judged almost if you don't contribute or you don't say something. If that's the case, if that's you, then they want you to release that kind of um, spirit, the word, please. It's like this kind of uh, hold that it has on you or this supposed to energy, this should energy. I should be doing this or else I'm not worthy to be in part of this group. They want you to release that and allow yourself to lean back a bit. And I feel like it's going to create even more flow for you to contribute from a much higher state of uh, being, right? So a different perspective. Wonderful. So I hope that this serves you for the day. And if you enjoyed this reading and you don't want to miss any of my future readings, you know what to do. And I'll see you in the next Daily Double. Hello, group two, and welcome to your reading today. If you're listening to this, you've chosen the second card combo here uh, for your message. So let's look at what element you're going to be working with first. We've got the element of earth for the idea of a pregnancy or fertilization for sure. Uh, something growing, something new, a new birth. Honor the journey. Don't rush. Experience life. Respect others and allow messes. Ooh, I love that. So allowing life to be messy on the journey because let's be frank, it is messy, right? We're here on the physical plane. Uh, we got divine beings all in their vessels walking around, figuring out what to do as they move along. Um, I would just want to say, first and foremost, if you are expecting a child or if you would, are you, you're looking to um, be expecting, right? If you're on a journey, a fertility journey, um, this is about staying grounded and honoring the fact that you are in the right space at the right time. And this is the journey that you're meant to be going through. So there's this really grounded, loving, kind of nurturing energy that's coming in for you there. If you are wanting to birth something new, even if that's not a child, a human baby, or like a pet or something, if you're not welcoming in a being, but you're working on something that is um, creative, or you're working on something in your career, you've got a project going on, or you're working in some, on something in your home, that would also apply here, that you are growing something beautiful, and you're meant to honor the journey, as opposed to just focusing on the finish line. Here for you, group number two today, it's about regrounding yourself in the now and what is, to not be rushing forward, to not try to make things happen faster. You wanna take your perception and your perspective and your conscious sight or your consciousness away from the finish line and bring it back to the now. It's a presence energy that says what you are growing, what you are building, what you are birthing is going to be something lovely 
and that they want you to experience the becoming of it, experience the journey. And I love this allow messes, that it might be messy, but it's like a beautiful mess, right? That's the point. <laughs> That's what life is. You could describe life as a beautiful mess. They want you to honor that as well, honor the physical experience. Let's see what we have connected. Ooh, the five of wands. And let's. she's playing chess here in this depiction, which I absolutely love. So five of wands energy is a change in your source energy that we're looking for here. Uh, this is about being strategic, I would say, and they're giving you the strategy, which is really nice. It's nice when spirit just gives us the answer to something. The five of wands tells me that you may have been a bit frustrated um, in your journey, on your journey here. Maybe you're frustrated with people not showing up for you or not being there for you or not helping you along the way. Um, you may be, you know, kind of upset about it, maybe angry. You could also be with a five of wands and a low expression, making comparisons, um, you know, comparing your journey to somebody else's, your birth journey, your pregnancy journey, your fertility journey, your project journey, your creative journey, your inspiring journey, the way that you get inspired, the way that you create, the way that you organize, whatever it is, that you're comparing yourself or you're in competition. I got to get it done before this person. I got to be better than this person. That energy is not going to serve you here at all. In fact, it's a detriment, they said. It's a detriment. So you just want to be you. That's why they're saying don't focus on the finish line. Instead, be very present in what you're experiencing now. If you can step into gratitude and understand in the high expression of this five of wands that they're preparing you to move towards that finish line anyway, that you don't have to have your consciousness on it, that you're moving in the right direction as well. And also that sometimes it is a little bit convoluted. Things are messy. Stuff gets you know in your way or somebody upsets you. That's okay. Return to your present experience. There's no rush in this. They want you to shift your energy so that it's supporting you, group number two, that there's this support mechanism. And that will attract people helping you in other ways. It will um, bring the right people into your life that vibrate in that positive energy as opposed to you trying to always be better than someone else or be in competition with someone else or judging yourself so harshly compared to someone else's journey. When number one, the truth is you're not meant to have their journey. You're on your own journey. And number two, the truth is, you don't know their journey. You don't know the ins and out of, outs of their journey. You're probably looking at a perception of their journey, which is probably largely not based in what their true journey day-to-day -day is. So remember that. Focus on you. Focus on the present moment. You're bringing something beautiful to life. Respect yourself. Respect others. Trust the experience of it. And allow things to be a little messy. Don't get, you know, don't be harsh on yourself or harsh on others. If things kind of get a little jumbled up, that's okay. Just reground yourself and know that this is a setup. They are setting you up to win. They're setting you up to be successful and to reach that finish line. And you don't have to worry about that for now, group number two. So I hope that this serves you for the day. If you enjoyed this reading and you don't want to miss any of my future readings, you know what to do. And I'll see you in the next Daily Double.